Amen. So our foundational scripture that we're going to get into, we've been on this scripture to start things out for a few weeks, is Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18. And uh, I've got the Amplified Translation. It says, pray at all times, on every occasion, in every season, in the Spirit, with all manner of prayer and entreaty. To that end, keep alert and watch with strong purpose and perseverance, interceding in behalf of all the saints, God's consecrated people. So Paul tells us, pray at all times, to pray in the Spirit, and to pray with all kinds of prayer and entreaty all the time. So we, we are really encouraged to pray because when we pray, things change on the earth and things change in our life. When we neglect prayer, there's things that happen that aren't the will of God in our lives and on the earth in general. And the more we pray, the more we're releasing heaven and seeing God's kingdom invade earth and lives change both ours and those around us. So in, in talking about, Paul says, pray with all kinds of prayer. We've, we've talked about this a little bit. There are three main categories of prayer. Those are fellowship with God, where you're building your relationship with God. Number two, intercession or praying for someone else or another circumstance or situation that involves somebody else. Or number three, receiving heaven's promises or resources. So, you know, all three of these types of prayer are very valid reasons to pray. And then under these three types of prayer, we have many, many, uh, three categories of prayer. We have many examples of types of prayer, and I'm teaching on these specific types of prayer. And so last week we started with the first uh, category, which is prayers uh, that build our relationship with God. And so, you know, the first types of prayers are those that build our relationship with God. Jesus says, this is eternal life, that you may know uh, me, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. Or you might know him, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. So it's God's will that prayer would be a vehicle for us to know God and our purpose for being, our purpose for our redemption is because God wanted a family. He wanted kids. He wanted sons and daughters, not robots, not more angels that he could just command and tell everything to do. He wanted fellowship and he wanted relationship. And so that's why he created us. And so the first purpose for us is to know God and have a relationship with him. And so the first type of prayer that we talked about last week to know God and have a relationship with God is the prayer of consecration. Tonight, I want to talk a little bit about the prayer of thanksgiving. And I believe you're going to be surprised at what awesome uh, benefits there are to prayers of thanksgiving and living a lifestyle of thanksgiving. So let's define thanksgiving. It means to offer God thanks for answering prayer, meeting a need, or manifesting his kingdom and goodness. And the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Notice the Bible says, in everything give thanks, not because of everything. And why would the Bible say that, you might ask? Well, there's three reasons why I can give thanks in everything and why you can give thanks in everything. And, you know, it's not because of everything. The Bible doesn't tell us to give thanks because of everything, but in everything. Here's the three reasons uh, why you can give thanks in everything, no matter what you're facing. Number one, your father is greater than all. We don't serve a structure of a God among other gods. He is the only God. He is the most high God. He is omnipotent. Omnipotent means always potent. He is always potent, omnipotent in every situation we face. Now, Jesus said this in John 10, 29, my father who has given them to me, talking about uh, the saints or God's children, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. Think about that. Our Father has adopted us as sons and daughters, and in making us sons and daughters, He has told us, there's nobody more powerful than me, and I hold my kids right in the palm of my hand, and nobody can take them from me. Nobody, nobody can snatch them out of my hand, Jesus said, because my Father is greater than all. Matter of fact, one of God's names 
is El Elyon, the Most High God. Think about that. He is greater than all. He is omnipotent. No foe can resist his power. And so yeah, <laughs> that puts you in a really good position. It's not who you, it's not what you know, it's who you know sometimes. And in this case, it's who you know. Number two, why can I give thanks in every situation? Number two, because I know the will of God for my life is good, and I know my Father is a good God. Now, Jesus said this in Matthew 19, 17. So he said to them, why do you call me good? No one is good but one that is God. So Jesus, somebody had called Jesus good in his ministry, and Jesus replies and says, hey, there is nobody good except God. So think about that statement. Jesus, Jesus was saying this, the best example of human goodness that we could hold up and declare this person is a good person is not even in the same classification of goodness that our Father is in. In other words, He stands alone. Matthew chapter 7, verse 11 says this, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask Him? Think about that. We could give good gifts to our children, but how much more will our Heavenly Father give good things to to those who ask him. Have you asked God for something good today? That's not wrong. He loves you and he loves to give good gifts to his kids. Matter of fact, he's made you 7,000 promises in his word telling about his goodness and his love for you and his desire to do you good. Matter of fact, too many Christians live in the realm of worry and worry is practical atheism. It's pretending like you don't have a father, pretending like you're an orphan and pretending you don't have 7,000 promises from the omnipotent good God who is your father. Amen. Think about that. He's your father. And he says he loves to give good gifts to his children. There's nobody as good as him. Remember this verse in James chapter 1 and verse 17, reading the Amplified Bible. Every good gift and every perfect, free, large, full gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of all that gives light in the shining of whom there can be no variation rising or setting or shadow cast by his turning as in an eclipse. Now think about what that means. Part of God's goodness is that he expresses his love language for his kids by giving large, full, free, and perfect gifts. God loves to give. It's part of his love language. You know, there's five different love languages people have. And one of the love languages a lot of people have is receiving gifts. Well, God loves to give gifts. If your primary love language is receiving gifts, you're blessed. I would say you're in luck, but it's not luck. It's you're blessed by the Most High God because he's addicted to giving and he's addicted to giving full, uh, beautiful, amazing, phenomenal, above and beyond gifts. That's who our Father is. Think about that. That's His very nature. Not only that, He never changes or varies in character. Never changes or varies in character, meaning He is the most countable, reliable being in all of history. I, I should say in all of the history of existence, which makes Him stand alone and above everyone else, giving him alone the title of holy. Holy means there's nobody like him. There is nobody like our God. Because when Jesus says there's none good but God, he was saying he stands in a class all by himself. And praise God, in the new birth, we're recipients of his goodness, and we're told to imitate our good father as dear children. But I want you to know, you can't find a human example that will really reflect the goodness of God because he's above, exceedingly, abundantly above all we can ask or think in his goodness. This is why we can give thanks. These are the three reasons we can give thanks no matter what we face. We can give thanks in everything, not because of everything, but in everything. Amen? And think about this. That's the second reason. Here's the third. The third and final reason we can give thanks in everything uh, is God will make all things work together for your good. Yes, God will make all 
all things work together for your good. Do we have a verse for it? Yes, we do. Think about this. Romans chapter uh, 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Now, even when something appears to be bad happens in my life, God will make it work together for my good, even those things the enemy causes. How on earth does this work? How can something that seems to be bad be turned around for good? You know, God is such a master at taking a terribly bad situation and redeeming it and turning it around that some people get the will of God confused and think God was the one that actually caused the bad situation. And most of the times that's not the case. Now, Sometimes we judge things, we make a snap judgment and face value and think God wasn't involved in what happened, but he could have been because he knows more than we do sometimes. But here's what you'll find, no matter what it is, God will always, always, always make it turn out for you, your good because that's who he is and that's what he does. That's what the Bible says about him, right? Um, why is this true? Here's the reason this is true, that he will cause all things to work together for our good. Number one, in verse 27, so the verse right before Romans 8, 28 is Romans 8, 27, and it talks about the fact that the Holy Spirit is making intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So Holy Spirit is continually, perpetually making intercession for you and making intercession for me. Now it says, according to to the will of God. Now, before I go farther in that, let me also say this, that in verse 34 of the same chapter, so in the same scriptural context, Jesus himself, Bible says, makes intercession for the saints. Now, he also, of course, is making intercession for the will of God. Now, what is the will of God? Think about this. Is there any sickness in heaven? No sickness in heaven. So there's God. it's God's will. There be no sickness on earth. Is there any poverty in heaven? Is there any depression in heaven? Is there any fear in heaven? Is there any spiritual death in heaven? None of these things exist in heaven. And so when we want to pray and release the will of God to be aligned with what his will, his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven, that means that we're going to be praying in line with the will of God, which means Holy Spirit and Jesus are ever living to make intercession for you and for me. So no matter what happens to us, we can give thanks because we know Jesus is praying for us. Holy Spirit is praying for us and praying the perfect prayers, the perfect intercession to work everything together for our good. Now, let me ask you a question. Does Jesus get his prayer answered, his prayers answered? Does Holy Spirit get his intercession answered? answered? I would say the answer to that, to that would be yes. Remember, Jesus prayed for Peter, and, and, and Satan had desired to sift Peter as wheat, but Jesus said, I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And we know Peter went on to fulfill the will, will of God, to write scripture, to re build the church, to operate in mighty signs, wonders, and miracles. And we're blessed today because of the ministry of the apostle Peter. Matter of fact, the apostle Peter even preached on the day of Pentecost, the message that birthed the church, uh, that released Holy Spirit and power, the kingdom of God into the church and really birthed the church in Acts chapter two. So I would say Jesus' prayer gets answered. Not only that, we've got a little nepotism going on and it's a good nepotism because Jesus is praying to his father, Holy Spirit praying to the father. Think about that. Uh, it's a family affair. <laughs> it's, it's not fair for the devil, but it's a wonderful family affair to think that God, that Jesus is interceding for you and me. What a blessing that is. What an awesome blessing that is. Now, the Bible says this, none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would have never 
They, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8. Think about this. The devil shot himself in the foot and all the demonic principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places, they all shot themselves in the foot when they inspired the Jews and the Romans to crucify Jesus because what they were actually doing was allowing Jesus to pay the sin price, the sin debt of the whole world in that process, which, which put God in a position where he could rightfully judge the devil and not have to judge us because our judgment fell on Jesus. He took it as the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He bore our sin. He bore our spiritual death. And he gives us the free gift of righteousness and eternal life. What an awesome deal. What a good, good father we have. Amen. So think about this. But you know, the devil has a tendency and a track record of perpetually over and over and over making the same mistake of attacking God's kids and shooting himself in the foot. Think about this. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the devil inspired people to uh, have the king heat up a burning fiery furnace and they were thrown into this furnace and the only thing that burned up was the, the cords that was holding them to get you know bound hand and feet in this fire. They were set free and they had a pre-incarnate uh, visitation of the Lord Jesus Christ in that fiery furnace. He appeared with them and he walked in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And it turned out that those that accused uh, <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego got in big trouble. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the name of God was elevated and they were elevated and promoted. So what the enemy came against them with, God turned around for their good and blessed them and promoted them and God's name was magnified. And the very same thing happened. Daniel in the lion's den, people um, told, you know, off on on Daniel, that he wouldn't bow down, that he wouldn't worship, that he wouldn't, uh, you know, that he would pray to, uh, you know, his God. And he was reported he was praying to his God. And, you know, the bad guys that, you know, said, hey, he's praying to another God. He's not praying to you, Nebuchadnezzar. So Nebuchadnezzar comes along and has to throw him in the, in the lion's den but the lions didn't touch him that night. But then the next day, his accusers were thrown in the lion's den. They were immediately killed and consumed by the lions. And Daniel's name was exalted. The name of God was exalted. Daniel was promoted in the province. And what was this? It's the same thing again. The devil comes against God's people. God turns it around, gets them blessed, promoted. God gets exalted in the process. This happens a lot. So when something's coming against you, even a demonic attack that looks bad, just think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or Daniel in the lion's den, and know that God will work all things together for good to those that love him and who are called according to his purpose, right? Now, I want to finish this teaching up today um, by bringing to your attention a revelation that uh, Keith Moore got from God on Thanksgiving. Keith Moore is a uh, awesome pastor and prophet. He's actually said a prophet and a pastor who pastors the church in Branson, Missouri. And I had the wonderful privilege of being taught by him when I attended Brahma Bible Training Center back in the early to mid 90s. And so he was one of my professors and it was such a blessing having him in class. But he had a revelation from the Lord he shared with us one time about Thanksgiving. And it was the Lord asked him this question, and it's powerful, and I, I believe it'll bless you. Jesus asked Keith this, would you like to know how to increase your capacity to receive from me? And of course he said, absolutely, yes. How, to I, how do I, or how, to, how do you increase your capacity to receive from God? Here is the answer to that. Cultivate a lifestyle of thanksgiving cultivate a lifestyle of thanksgiving. How do I cultivate a lifestyle of thanksgiving? And then why does that increase my ability to receive from God? Here's the answer. Here's how you cultivate a lifestyle of thanksgiving. Number one, you recognize, recognize, you recognize when God answers prayer. You recognize by the eye of faith when God has done something good in your life. You recognize when you've walked in divine health for 25 years and never had a surgery on your body, things like this. You recognize 
that God is with you and God has blessed you. And you say, thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible talks about lifting up holy hands without wrath and without doubting, thanking God for his goodness and what he's done in your life. Think about that. Recognizing is to acknowledge and to be grateful. Now you could you can recognize and acknowledge and be grateful before you even see something manifest. In other words, if I believe I receive something in prayer, I'm gonna stop and thank God that it, he's already done it then because whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you take them, the Bible says, Mark 11, 24, and you shall have them. So if I believe I receive something in prayer and I really believe it, I'm gonna stop and say, thank you, Father. You have healed my body. Even before symptoms have disappeared out of my body, I'm gonna stop and start thanking God that his word declares that I am healed, that he forgives all my iniquities and he heals all my diseases and I'm gonna thank him. Thanksgiving is the voice of faith because Thanksgiving is given when you believe you've received something. How powerful is Thanksgiving to seeing our prayers answered? No, don't wait to thank God after you've prayed. But as soon as you pray, thank God that he's already answered your prayer. The Bible says before you even speak, he knows what you're gonna say and what you're, you're gonna ask. But we have not because we ask not. We need to ask. So number one is to recognize, acknowledge, and be grateful for what he has done and what he is doing. Number two, to remember and be grateful. Remembering is so powerful. When I'm facing a faith battle, like for instance, if I'm facing a battle in my body of sickness or disease, I remember when I was riding my motorcycle and I crashed and I broke this wrist and it, it has swollen up huge. And I got an x-ray that night and they found the I had a compression fracture and I needed surgery. That was on a Saturday night. And then that Sunday morning, the saints prayed for my wrist and I was supernaturally healed by the power of God because I started declaring he forgives all my iniquities and heals all my diseases. And I was being stupid on a motorcycle, driving too fast, off-road, racing buddies, I didn't break my wrist because of just some accident. I was, you know, <laughs> trying to ride my motorcycle too fast and I crashed and I broke my wrist. But even though I was stupid and even though I, you know, you could say I sinned in doing that, God still supernaturally healed my wrist and this wrist is just as good as this wrist. I can lift weights. I can do everything. No pain, no symptoms, supernaturally healed, no surgery, no cast. The power of God is real. When I face sickness or disease trying to attack my body or an accident or anything like that, I put myself in remembrance of what God did healing my wrist. And that is a testimony that I carry within me that boosts my faith. Not only that, I've used that testimony and prayed for people and seen bones supernaturally come back together and be healed in people's body just by sharing that testimony and then praying for them. Why? Because your testimony and your healing is not just that God wants to do that, but it is a testament of the will of God that what he wants to do for all time, for all people, is he wants to heal them. He's a good father. Think about that. So you remember now, and then you recount. Number three, recount. You tell one by one in detail. You say it, you show it, you express gratitude. We should tell our kids. We should tell our friends. We should share these testimonies with people that don't even know Jesus and tell them he's a good, good God. He's Our father's a good father. Holy Spirit is wonderful. Our God, our father is love. Our Jesus is a God who releases grace. Holy Spirit helps me every day of my life, divinely empowering me, divinely empowering you. We have a good father. We have a lot to be excited about. We have a lot to be thankful for. So why by cultivating a lifestyle of thanksgiving do I increase my capacity to receive from God? Here's the simple answer. It's found in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11. It says this, by faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed and she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promise. Now notice, why did Sarah receive this miracle? There was a reason. It was because she judged God 
faithful who had promised. In other words, there are two pillars that hold up your faith that allow you to receive from God. Number one, what he's promised you. Number two, the character and faithfulness of God. Now think about this. When you've got past testimonies and past miracles that have happened in your life, when you face a similar situation in the in the future, you have a reservoir of faith to access by putting yourself in remembrance of what God has already done for you in the past. You begin to meditate. Yeah, he did this. He met this need. He healed my body. He gave me a great wife. He gave me wonderful kids. He, he made me a pastor and, and gave me a church and, and he's done so many things. I start putting myself in remembrance and I didn't deserve any of this because I was lost sinner bound on my way to hell. But God, who is so good shed his blood for me on a cross so I might have eternal life. Oh, friend, no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, if you'll even just put yourself in remembrance that you did not deserve what Jesus did for you, I did not deserve, but God had such great value for us and such great love for us that he was not willing to allow us to be lost and end up in the lake of fire with the devil, but Jesus came and shed his blood to set us free. I'm telling you, we serve a good God. We have many reasons to be thanksgiving or <laughs> thankful and to operate in a lifestyle of thanksgiving and to cultivate a lifestyle of thanksgiving. I want to finish with this quote by Dr. David Jeremiah. It says, no matter what our circumstances, we can find a reason to be thankful. I want you to think about that today. Find the reason to be thankful in your life because there's certainly reasons to be thankful. If you have breath, the Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. If you have breath, you have a reason to be thanks thankful today. So uh, I just want to say it's been great being with you. I've really enjoyed it. I love teaching on prayer. And I want to invite you to um, to Oasis Church. If you don't have a home church and you live in the Edmond or Oklahoma City region and you don't have a good home church, we meet Saturday nights at 6 p.m., 16,000 Northwestern Avenue, Edmond, Oklahoma. And you can go to our website, www.edmondoasis.tv and uh, find out more information about our ministry. You can also go to jamesfortune.tv, find out more information about my ministry. If you want to have invite me to minister at a conference or a church service, I'm available for that. And also you can go to our YouTube channel and find over 300 uh, teachings on a variety of subject to help you out in your Christian walk. It's been so good being with you tonight. You know, if you've been blessed by this broadcast and this blesses you, consider sowing a seed to help us keep preaching the gospel around the world. It takes a lot of money to send the gospel out to the world, and we just want to continue to increase. We want to get on more TV, more radio, more internet opportunities, and to get the word of God out there in every way possible because there's so many people that need to be born again and so many people that need to be taught about their rights and privileges in Christ Jesus and how to operate in the supernatural power of God. And that's a big part of our desire. 